Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. And when you get there, we want verse 10. The thief cometh not for, but, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, what does he mean? He's saying that he's come to revive the spirit of man by his death, burial, and resurrection. Outside of that, man can't experience life. He can only experience awareness and sensation. That's why he's. That's why the scripture is talking about being dead in trespasses and sins. A person exists. They're not literally dead. They still have the spirit within them. They're walking this earth, but they can't experience life unless the spirit becomes regenerate, born again, the enemy. Having said that, what we find, <clears throat> when a person dies, that spirit departs and it goes back to God that gave it. The soul is left to enter into eternity. Now we want to take a look at this. Scripture teaches that the person is forever separated from God, having no connection to God or life, because they no longer have a spirit. He can only experience existence, awareness, a state of consciousness. The soul only experiences awareness, not life. Turn to Luke, 16th chapter, verse 23. chapter we get there verse 23 <clears throat> which man and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments and see if Abraham will fall off and Lazarus in his bosom so what we find here the rich man can experience sensation he can experience emotion he can experience <clears throat> his surroundings but he cannot experience life. The soul of itself cannot experience life apart from the spirit. <clears throat> so what we find here, and it's the same thing is true with people in the world, in life. If their spirit's not active, they're experiencing sensation and awareness, and emotion. They're not experiencing life because their spirits are not active. Now, Scripture teaches, being unable to ever experience life, life acts to forget them. In other words, life considers them non-existent. It cannot, uh, life cannot penetrate into hell and impart life, because there is no spirit to receive it. So life wipes it all out as though it doesn't exist. Turn to Psalms, 31st chapter, verse 12. Psalm 31, verse 12. I am forgotten as a dead man, out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. Life draws a curtain down on the individual and forgets them because they are literally, from the perspective of life, non-existent. Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, verse 5.
Ecclesiastes 6 what? 5? Ninth, ninth chapter. Okay, 9. Verse 5. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. They've been erased from life, from the memory of existence. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't realize they can't see themselves as being dead. They just transferred from one experience to another experience. They never cease consciousness. They just shift consciousness. People that are dead in this life are dead. So when they transit from this life into hell, it's just more death that they experience. Just like those experience eternal life. They're experiencing true life. When they die, but just experience the fullness of it. So everybody is in basically the condition that they're going to transit into. Only more so of what they're experiencing. In this particular capacity, what the dead can experience is a heightened sensory awareness. All the senses are heightened far more than they were physical world, in their emotions, in their ability <clears throat> to feel is height, but they can never feel or sense life. What does that mean? It means that they are feeling, they are sensing, they are experiencing anti-life. Turn to Psalms 55 verses 4 to 5. Psalms 55, verses 4 to 5, My heart is sore pain within me, <clears throat> and all the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. Overwhelmed me. That's what they feel in death. The antithesis of life. Because they cannot, they aren't capable of experiencing life. They're only capable of experiencing anti-life, things that fall outside of life. So they're doomed to experience every realm of existence that's apart from life. In every emotion that is antithetical to life, fear, torment, terror, uh, a total instability of everything. And they feel it in a higher degree than they ordinarily would feel it in this life. Because there's no limitations, no restrictions. God has engineered all of this in a way in which it's justly administered. The way the person lived, that's what he's going to experience when he dies. The things that he has done the conditions that he set up, he's going to experience them in death. Turn to Job, 10th chapter, verses 20 to 22.
Job 10, chapter, verses 20 to 22. <clears throat> Are not my days few? Cease then, and let me alone, that I may take comfort a little. Before I go whence, I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. The land of darkness is darkness itself, and of the shadow of death, without any order, and where the light is as darkness. People who live in darkness in this life <clears throat> go to conditions of darkness in eternity, remembering that they can't experience life anymore, and life is experienced in light. People who live in darkness and bring about a darkness upon themselves, enter into the realms of darkness, and they experience it to the full. Darkness is symbolic of death, <clears throat> which means isolation, depression, fear, torment, the whole gamut of emotions. That's what they experience. And depending upon the life they live, they experience it on a certain level of intensity. Now we're going to take a look at a time in which the bodies of these people will be joined to their souls. It's called the resurrection of the dead. Turn to Revelation, the 20th chapter, verses 5 to 6. The rest of the dead, if not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection is called the resurrection to life. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So what's being said here? <coughs> The resurrection starts with what we call the rapture. It's the high point. And throughout the tribulation period, you're going to have groups of saints killed and go to heaven. At the second coming, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns to earth, you're going to have the finale of the resurrection, where the saints that were beheaded and the last martyrs who were dying even as the saints come back from heaven, they were still being butchered and killed, so they don't go to heaven, they resurrect on the earth. And right after them, the Old Testament saints rise and are resurrected. And that's the ending of what's called the first resurrection. Everybody in that resurrection is going to experience the resurrection to life, only on a specific level. He's saying everybody in that resurrection is going to be blessed. Because they're going to be blessed with the fullness of eternal life and the level in which they find themselves. After that, a thousand years transpire, and you get what's called the resurrection of the dead. They're not resurrected to life. They're resurrected to death, final death. Their bodies are joined with their souls, in union, the way they die is going to come together with the soul, the condition that they were in when they died, because there is no life, it's going to come together with that soul and be united as one individual, one being, and experience the eternality of death. <clears throat> Resurrection, uh, Revelation, the 20th chapter. Verses 12 to 13. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead 
the judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now what's being said here is they have resurrected and they're going to stand in their corrupted, polluted, rotting corpses before the throne of God. The books are going to be opened and they're going to be judged uh, out of their works. In other words, the life that they lived on earth. That's going to determine the degree of death that they will experience for eternity. That's why it says they judge out of their works. According to their works, they're going to be rewarded. So the person who was a mass murderer, the person who was um, somebody that lived heinously all his life, butchered, hacking, and hewing his way to power, is going to stand before the judgment seat and be judged according to the things that he did and experienced death in that state. In other words, he has to pay for all that he did out of his own life, which of course he has no life, it's death. And for eternity, he's going to be thrown into the lake of fire to some level of experiencing this eternal damnation. Everybody that stands before the great white throne is going to experience that. Turn to Isaiah, the 66th chapter. Isaiah 66, verses 22 to 24. So this is taking place on the new earth. This is the scene that Isaiah is giving us of what it will be like in the in eternal state. For the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, Saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For the worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. They shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So they're going to go to a certain spot on the earth in the view of the lake of fire the torment regions are going to be there for all to see they're going to see look across and see the corpses of the, of the dead in all their agony in all their putridness and corruption they're going to see how these individuals are suffering in the death zone. And the Lord is making it that way so that no man would ever again rebel. It's going to be a sign of what happens to men that rebel against God. And it says that they're going to look out and they're going to see this and it's going to be a warrant to them. They're going to shudder at the sight probably turn away, turn away very quickly and go back into the paradise region and the life that God has destined for them. You won't be able to see this from the heaven, but you'll be able to see it you come down to earth and go to this place that God has reserved so you can look out and see this. Death, darkness, the lake of fire, out of darkness will be, will be wide open for the total view of everybody 